Jack Lair here. I'm just up way too late, and a few of my friends have said that I should just uh, hop on here and tell some stories. Just point the camera at myself and go. So, here I am. Uh, it's finally cooling off here in Texas, so I should be actually be able to get back out to the man shed in about a week or so. And tomorrow is the arcade auction in Mesquite. So I'll be going over there, uh, probably bump into uh, the Game Chasers, as I think they're going as well. Hopefully uh, rub elbows with them again. It was nice to see them last time. Be nice to see them again. I want to start, because this has been bugging me for a while, with... They don't deserve reviews, because these games are total crap. So I just want to warn you all away from some of these games. Now, one of them I can't hold because I it came with a Steam code. I downloaded it on Steam, started playing it, and it's 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 crap, through and through. It's horrible on the PC. I don't know if it's better on the Xbox, but it's the Last Remnant. And admittedly, the story had me kind of interested because there are remnants in the world, and there. Are monsters that are everybody's okay with and nobody knows the name of anything it's kind of like uh, when you see Chewbacca and you don't know that he's a Wookiee yet but uh, you're playing the game and on the PC it doesn't convert any of the controls so everything says press X and you're just like I don't know where X is on the keyboard so you gotta grab your controller and plug it in and even then the you wander around, you talk to people that really don't have anything to say, and it's from Square, I think. And the, I was fine with this story, I was fine with walking around, and you can see the monsters, you can kind of dodge them if you want, go around them. But the thing that really bugged me, and bugged the living crap out of me, is that the battle systems make no sense. None. You're, you're, you've got two groups, and there are two groups of enemies. And every time it's a turn, it just like swivels around and goes all crazy. And you're like, I don't know where they are. I don't know where I am. I don't know where anything is. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're flanking them. Well, great. How did I do that? It doesn't make any sense. Just give me a grid. It's like a grid that if you were to draw a grid in like marker and then soak it in water and the grid would all get all blurry. That's what it reminds me of. There's no rhyme or reason to anything that's going on. So Last Remnant on PC. Don't do it. Maybe on the 360 it's it's functional. But not, not on the PC. <clears throat> the other two, and one of them I picked up, and I originally thought that it was going to be okay. And that's Mind Jack for the PS3. Now, the whole reason I got this is because my friend who I've played with for a long time, used Mindjack as his his handle online. So every game we would go to, he would be Mindjack. So I decided to pick this up, and maybe th this is the one made by Square Enix. It's a third-person shooter, fairly serviceable. And just like one of my favorite games, Geist, you can hop between people as you attack them. Now this sounds like a good idea, because I really loved Geist, but there's no puzzle solving aspect. It's all shooting. You can wound people until the point where you can make them a mind slave, and then you can turn them to your side, and then you can inhabit them, and then as long as you keep your two main characters alive, you can inhabit the other characters and kill more bad guys, or you can mind slave them, or you can also mind slave machines but the thing that really clued me in that this was a bad game is that after every mission every mission there's a cutscene after that cutscene it tells you or asks you we've saved the game are you sure you want to keep playing yes or no and after the first, like, five episodes, I was finally like, you know what? No. No. Thank, thank you for asking. I don't want to keep playing. I'm done. So if any of you want this, just let me know. I'll send it to you. But be warned, 
It is utter crap. So that's that. Now the last game, I'm late to it. And I played the first one. Loved it. Played the first one the first time I bought a PlayStation. I sat down and I played the game in one shot. And I loved it. Got the second one. Played it through. Loved it. Got the third one. Uh, didn't really love it. Got about halfway through and quit. The fourth one. I made it about half an hour in. After two hours of installing it. We'll leave that alone. After two hours of installing it. Half an hour of playing it. I ejected it. Put it back in the case. And have not put it back in. And I refuse to. That is Metal Gear Solid 4. Now I know that a lot of people really love Metal Gear. I love Metal Gear Solid. I love Metal Gear Solid 2. I really want to pick up the, the HD versions and go from there. But this game was preachy. In a way, I, it opened up with a game show. It opens up with a game show going on. Like, who wants to be a millionaire? That's what it starts with. I don't want a game show. I want to be Snake. Or you know what? I'll even take uh, the other guy. I want to be him. I want to be sneaking around. Taking dudes out with my tranquilizer gun. Getting key cards. Hiding in cardboard boxes. That's what I want to be doing. This was just horrible. So there are three games to avoid. Last Remnant, Mind Jack, and Metal Gear Solid 4. Metal Gear Solid 4, if you love the series, just go back and play 1 and 2 again. And one of the other things I want to talk about is that uh, Billy did a, a, a video along with um, throwing away cases. He went on about how Moving Trading Company throws away Genesis cases. I've got news for you. Most of the stores that sell though sell games throw away the cases. GameStop's been doing this for years. That's actually where I get I found out a fun trick is that what I do is I go and find the cases that they've thrown away that are still in perfect condition, have the manual in them. And then I go in the next day and say, hey, I have, do you have this game? And lo and behold, they do, but they don't have a box. So they sell it to me for $2. I now have a complete version of that game for $2. I put it away for when I can play it. I have probably over 100 empty cases for games that I just can't buy because going in there and buying them even at a dollar or two dollars a piece, just, they're that many. And a lot of them are repeats, so, you know, I don't really need to. But it's just the idea that... Because these aren't... They're not... Like, cardboard, I can understand throwing away cardboard. I can understand throwing away a cardboard box. If it gets damaged, throw it away, whatever. But these are all hard plastic cases that especially for ones like the GameCube, the DS, uh, the Genesis, and the PS2 all have specific things that are in with them. So a normal DVD case, you open up the DVD case, there's the little front, let me see if I've got one around. Um, wait one. I've got a game here uh, by uh, Albert Kuhn, who does a lot of the movies that I really, really liked. Uh, Sword and Sorcerer is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Alien from L.A. And when you open it up, it's got the spot for the disc, and it's got the little tabs for the thing to go into. Now, Xbox cases look like this. Xbox 360 cases look like this. 
PS3 cases are the weird little short ones. They look like Blu-ray cases, but they're pretty much the same. Now, a PS2 case is a little different because it has a spot for a memory card. Now, that may not sound like much, but because the PlayStation 2 has no way to save games, short of hacking it, to be able to save games locally, those memory cards become increasingly important. The same with GameCube games. If you put a GameCube game in one of these, it just doesn't fit right. Plus, the GameCube cases, some of them, have room for the memory card as well. The DS cases have rooms for both uh, a DS cart, and most of them have the little spot for the Game Boy Advance case. Which, why the Game Boy Advance games didn't come in those cases, I don't know. But, thank you for at least an ounce of decency, Nintendo. So stop! Stop! You know what? Don't throw them away. Don't throw them away. Sell them for a dime a piece. Put them in a big box, and you'll have people like me walk in and need a case, and walk in and go, oh, a case! And we'll snap up ten of them for a dollar. You make a little bit of profit, you don't have to throw them away, everybody wins. The other thing you can do, you know, sell them for a quarter piece. Sell them for a quarter piece, I'll do that. Especially Genesis cases, where those... If you've ever watched Ed's videos, Ed buys crappy games with the cases so that he can then swap those out for the good games. Now, I that may seem a bit excessive to some of you, and I know a lot of you are just like, what? I, just, I don't care. And, fine. But for those of us who actually want the nice case, for instance, this is my iPhone box. This is the box my iPhone came in. Why do I have it? Because it's a nice box. And when I eventually resell or pass on my iPhone, I can put it back in the case. And then it is a complete iPhone. I'll put the cord back in and I'll pass it along. Easy, right? So why throw away, if I'm hanging on to a cardboard one, why are you throwing away plastic ones? Why are you throwing them away? If you're going to get rid of them, at least recycle them. Savages. Now, the... All that aside, I did want to get on to kind of a happier topic. And this is one that I'd like to actually see if any of you have ever thought of. Now, we all know that there have been games that have stayed rooted in what they are. Now, if you don't know what, what I'm talking about, let's think of things like Doom. Doom was a shooter. Doom 2 was a shooter. Doom 3 was a shooter all the way through. What I want to see is I want to see some more companies mixing it up. Now, one that did it a little bit was with the Final Fantasy series. We got Final Fantasy Tactics. Great. We went from an RPG to a strategy RPG. Strategy game. Great. We had turns, we had grids. Great. I like this. I want to see you go farther. So for Square Enix, here's, here are the two things I want. One of them I have to attribute to Garnet Lee. It was a misspeak on his part, but I would really like to see that. And he accidentally said, because football season's coming up, he actually accidentally said Final Fantasy Football. Can you imagine Final Fantasy Football? where there are different teams and you have to draft where you want the red wizard, where you want the fighter, where you want the black belt, where you want the, uh, you know, the pinty hits, where you want all these people who just squall your quarterback or is cloud is Tifa a cheerleader on the side, or is she one of the wide receivers? Think about it. Final fantasy has enough characters to where you could actually fill probably a few teams with non-generic characters. Although I don't really know how the Red Wolf would catch a ball. Anyways. Maybe he's a linebacker. 
But that's one of the things I'd like to see. The other I would like to see, and this one is one that I would really love to see someone do. And if I had the time, I would sit down with Beats of Rage and do it. And that is, make me a brawler. Give me a good old-fashioned brawler, throw in some Final Fantasy stuff. Now imagine this. You fight along the way, and you level up. You learn new spells, you go to different places, the backdrop changes, or, or better yet, do it like Castle Crashers. You fight through a level, you fight through a level, you fight through two or three levels, you get to a boss, you beat the boss, you go back to the overworld map. And then you have to go back and forth once you get the airship, and once you get the whatever, and the doobie thing over here, and then you have to go back over here, now you can unlock a new level once you get the sandwiches. I know I'm mixing the two games together in that definition, but imagine what they could do with that. They could make a really awesome game! And it could really bring back the flailing brawler genre. Because really, we've got Castle Crashers and that's it. I mean, and I, I mean go back to Final Fantasy. Recreate the first Final Fantasy game where it's four warriors, sounds familiar, searching for the things that they can do to make the orbs light up again. How awesome would that be? But that's what, that's what, if you take away from anything, that's what I would like to hear you guys talk about. Either in response videos or in the comments. What would you, what, what series would you like to see do something completely different? Like, just go off in a genre that you, you, you've never thought of before. Now, I'm sure there are going to be some examples and some good ones. And there is one PlayStation game that I can never remember the name of that did have Final Fantasy characters in it. I'm not counting that. What I mean is an actual Final Fantasy game that's a brawler. You gave me a strategy game. It started out as an RPG. Go ahead and go to a brawler. Do make it a downloadable title. Make it a DS title. I don't care. Do something creative. Give me something. Something new. Something fun. Breathe life back into your series. Stop making the same old tired stuff over and over and over again. I'll end it on kind of a weird note. And this is something that uh, almost any of you can take or leave. As just kind of a fun story. Now, my son's been having problems. Uh, he goes to Taekwondo, and he's a black belt. He started training kids, but he's having problems as of late. Now, I've started to combat those problems by I introduced him to Bushido. Now, for those of you who don't know what Bushido is, Bushido is the way of the warrior. It was basically the, the unwritten code of the samurai. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of this stuff wrong, so I'm, I'm way overgeneralizing it. But since then, what I've done is I've shown him the seven uh, different virtues of Bushido. And I'm asking him every day, what did you do to show honor? What did you do to show integrity? What did you do to show compassion? And he's taking to it with a tenacity that I've never seen before. Now maybe it's because he knows that he knows that this is important. Maybe he knows that this maybe this is just something new and he's fascinated with it. But he seems to really be starting to think about the concepts and grasp them. Think about a ten year old who grasped the concept of honor. How weird is that? When I was ten, I didn't grasp anything, really. Something else I want to point out is a fun little experiment that I did. And it worked, and I was delightfully surprised about it. Now, a lot of people remember these. They're the little handheld TVs that now don't function as TVs because of the digital switchover. But, I want to point something out. And this is kind of weird. Is that 
a lot of them, let me see if I can find it, have audio video, can't see it, there you go, audio video plugs. So you plug the audio video in there, you move it to a connector, and then you move it to, let's say, your GameCube. So now you've got a little screen sitting on top of your GameCube, and you can play your GameCube in the car if you have an inverter. Now I found this, I mean, it's, it's, it's stupid, right? You're on a, what, a two-inch screen? Two and a half, maybe? But, in a pinch, this is actually kind of fun. And it's just weird enough that it made me smile. When I figured out how to do it, it was fun to put it together. And my son just walked by, looking at me, mystified, and then in awe that I would manage to make this work. Now, ideally, you just get one of the LCDs that snap onto the back of the GameCube and you work from there. I haven't found one of those and I really can't be bothered to look for one on eBay when I've got uh, fun little things to tinker with like this. This got free by the way. Somebody was just tossing it out. People toss out so much stuff. I'm still amazed at just the the quantity of things that we throw away knowing that they still work. That's the, the, the doubly weird part. Like if your, if your blender breaks I understand just tossing it out. I would take it apart and tinker with it because that's a really powerful motor that could be fun to do some stupid stuff with. Like throw tennis balls across the yard. But I'm taking up uh, way too much of your time. I'll go ahead and let you go and uh, as always, play on!